Let's work in Z mod P, the integers modulo P. And suppose I've got an element X with order six. What does that mean? Well, it means that X to the six is one, but X isn't one and X squared isn't one and X cubed isn't one. And I wanna unpack this a bit. I wanna play with this idea a bit. Now, although I'm interested in working in Z mod P, I wanna think about this geometrically. And by geometrically, I mean, let's think in terms of the complex plane. Well, here's the complex plane with the real axis and the imaginary axis. And here, these six dots are the six roots of the polynomial x to the six minus one. The roots of x squared minus one are plus or minus one, and they're also roots of x to the six minus one. We've also got the roots of x cubed minus one, and these are also roots of x to the six minus one. Now, one of those roots is one, since one cubed minus one is zero. And if I divide x cubed minus one by x minus one, I get x squared plus x plus one. The two roots of x squared plus x plus one are the primitive third roots of unity. And along with the roots of x squared minus one, these account for four of the six roots of x to the six minus one. So I've got x to the six minus one factoring as x squared minus one times x squared plus x plus one times a third term, x squared minus x plus one. The two roots of x squared minus x plus one are the primitive sixth roots of unity. So let's reflect on this. Uh, we can get an element of order six just by solving a quadratic. And maybe it isn't obvious, or maybe it is obvious, but the quadratic equation or the quadratic formula works just as well in Z mod P as it does in uh, usual mathematics. So let's try to solve X squared minus X plus one equals zero to find an element of order six. By the quadratic formula, a root of that polynomial is one half one plus or minus the square root of one minus four. So let's suppose that minus three on P is one. So we actually have a square root of minus three. And then we get an element of order six. And because we have an element of order six, we know that six divides P minus one, or in other words, P is one mod six. Now, on the other hand, if P is not one mod six, then we must not have a square root of minus three. It's mildly entertaining to see some numerical examples here. So set P equals 19, and we know that four times four is minus three mod 19. So minus three on 19 is one. And sure enough, one plus four divided by two is 12 mod 19. And one minus four divided by two is eight mod 19. And 12 and eight are both elements of order six in U19. On the other hand, 17 is a prime which is not one mod six. And so it must be that minus three on 17 is minus one. And sure enough, if we laboriously check all the squares in Z mod 17, we miss negative three. There's a lot more to say about primes which are one mod six or primes which are one modulo something. For example, how many primes are one mod four or three mod four? You know, there aren't many primes that are two mod four. Okay, the problem sets are gonna ask you to think about primes that are one mod four and such, but I'd like us to attack uh, this problem today. Let's show that there are infinitely many primes uh, of the form one mod six. So how do we show that there were infinitely many primes in the first place? Well, given a list of primes, we can always produce another prime by multiplying together all the primes on our list and adding one. And if we do this with primes that are one mod six, we do get a prime that wasn't on our list, but it isn't necessarily one mod six. For example, seven and 13 and 19 and 31 and 37, they're all one mod six. But if we multiply them all together and add one, we get four times 495,791. And well, 495,791 is definitely a new prime, but it's five mod six. So we need to be more careful. Now the special polynomial f of x equals x squared minus x plus one will come to our rescue. The roots of this polynomial are elements of order six and we'll use this in a clever way to sneak up on more primes, which are one mod six. Now let's suppose we have primes P1, P2, da, 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 PN, which are all primes that are one mod six. And our new goal is to produce a prime not on our list, which is also one mod six. In this way, we're gonna conclude that there are infinitely many primes that are one mod six. And even better, we'll find out how to produce more such primes. Now we're gonna use this polynomial F to help us out. And we'll compute F of Q, where Q is P1 times P2 times da 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 times PN. Now note that in this case, F of Q is bigger than one. So there's some prime P that divides F of Q. Now that prime P can't be two because F of Q is odd. And that prime P can't be three because Q is one mod three. So Q squared is also one mod three. So Q squared minus Q plus one is one mod three. And that prime P can't be any of the P sub i either. Why not? The Q squared and Q terms are both multiples of PI. So Q squared minus Q plus one cannot be a multiple of PI. So we've got a prime P, which isn't one of the PI and isn't two and isn't three. So F of Q is zero mod P. And since X to the six minus one is a multiple of X squared minus X plus one, we have that Q to the six is one mod P. Now, could it be that Q is one mod P? No, because then we would have Q squared minus Q plus one is one squared minus one plus one is one and one isn't zero. 
Could it be that Q squared is one mod P? Well, we already saw that Q isn't one mod P. So if Q squared is one mod P, then Q would be minus one mod P. But evaluating F of minus one, that equals three and P is not three. Could it be that Q cubed is one mod P? Well, since Q isn't one, we would then have that Q squared plus Q plus one is zero mod P. And subtracting this from F of Q equals zero mod P, we'd find that negative two Q is zero mod P. But since P isn't two, this implies Q is zero mod P, a contradiction. So we have an element of UP of order six, and this is enough to show that six divides P minus one. That is, we've shown that P is one mod six. And since P wasn't a prime that we had on our list, we found a new prime, which is one mod six. And consequently, there are infinitely many primes of the form one mod six. It even guides us to finding more primes that are one mod six. Instead of multiplying together seven and 13 and 19 and 31 and 37, and then adding one, we'll instead compute F of seven times 13 times 19 times 31 times 37. And when we do that, we get 3,932,933,501,407, which is prime and one mod six. Well, it's a really neat trick and it's a really neat result. And it leads to just a ton of additional questions. And maybe the first question is, how many primes are there that are congruent to n mod m? You know, Dirichlet's theorem uh, is the result that explains some of this. And I think there's also a, a lot that you can do with the techniques that we've seen today to try, try to generalize them. You know, you can think about uh, maybe the case of primes that are one mod n for some n. 